Hello everybody, welcome back, Fumbler here. And yeah, today will be a quite different video because today we are going to try and open a safe. Not this one, but um, the next one I will show you in a second. Let me first remind you how you open a safe. <laughs> Basically, I reset the dial already by turning it like four times to the left. And now I can enter the combination, which is in this case 11. And then I have to pass the next one 88 once, twice, and stop on the third time there, like this. And then the last combination is 55. We go once past it, and the second time we were at it, we stop there. And now the safe should open. Yes, so locking bolt is retracted and let's have a look inside. I'm not so sure if you have any idea about safes. Uh, by the way, this is a Sparrow's Challenge vault I played around with, which is it's a nice tool or toy, <laughs> I don't know how you want to call it, to learn safe cracking. And I can do a separate video um, as a review, if you want to, about this whole product. But uh, I will not go into details, it just you have different... Yeah, let's have a look at the safe lock first of all. So right now it's open. Um, if we lock it back up, you see here's a lever and this goes into the fence of the three gates. If I move them further, you see the last gate disc already uh, disengaged. And what I turn with the dial, when I spin the dial in the front, is a drive cam. Yeah? There are plenty of videos explaining this. I'm just doing this to give you a round picture what we're doing today. And what you have to do is you may have to set the combination in a way that you park these dials at the correct positions. Like now the third dial is off. And I have to just set it back a tiny bit like this. And now you see the gates are aligned. And once I turn the drive in the open position, I can open the lock. Um, so how do you crack a safe? Well, basically what you do is you try and um, feel um, how deep your lever is falling into the into the stack of dry of wheels. Yeah. So basically, what you do is you you check the contact points. Like you you check um, where this contact point is on your dial, and where this contact point is on your dial. Yeah. And this will change depending how far your lever falls into the drive cam. And of course it can fall further if more gates are aligned. And this is what you're trying to probe. So th this is how basic manipulation goes. You um, just go number by number, check if it goes further in and just be very gentle with, with it. And yeah, you graph it out and then you hopefully find the true gates. But yeah, let's put this toy away mm. and get in the lock I want to manipulate, which is this one. So this is a Lagarde 300 uh, or 3330. And yeah, it's mounted on an original safe door. Actually, I stole this door from my parents' house, so their jewelry, jewel, uh, jewelry is now unprotected. <laughs> but yeah, they haven't noticed so far, so we'll still, they will complain if, if they visit. <laughs> um, and yeah, here, same game. Basically, you spin the dial and you want to feel for the gate. I have had my wife set a combination for me, so I don't know what's actually the combination right now. 
So I want to try and manipulate this open. Mm. So this will be quite tedious, but I think I will just leave it running for a bit and then you can follow it in fast forward and I'll come back once I have the first graph. So graphing, yeah, basically you have a sheet like this. I will enter in the contact points in just a second and all the info. And then you just go number by number and check what the contact area is. So I hope I can take you along this manipulation and hopefully I can get the combination and get it open. So let's start with fast forwarding. a graph and yeah I mapped out the left contact point and the right contact point and basically the right contact point is if you look on, on the sparrows vault again is the one that lifts the cam up and the left contact point is the one that um, will pull the lever along for opening in the end and what you see is um, the slope on the right contact point is a bit um, shallower so if you're careful you should be able to differentiate the right contact point a bit better than the left contact point because the slope here is rather steep or at least that's what I think <laughs> because yeah 
Ähm, a steep slope was needed for opening. Yeah. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the graph. Um, it's not so clean, I had some misreadings here and there. But basically what you're looking for now is minima in the contact area. So where the left contact point goes to the right, so to higher numbers, and the right contact point goes to the left, so lower numbers. And this should happen at areas at the same time. And I had some readings here. Um, basically this was all around at 13.7 and sometimes it jiggled a bit. Um, here it goes a bit higher, then a bit lower again. And I had areas where it was at 0 0.4, here at 17.5. So I will have a closer look on, on this area, but on here I did not have a higher reading on the left contact point. Um, but there was also a good reading here at 52.5, which is also, also 0 0.4. And here also the, um, the reading for the left contact point was a bit higher. So what I will do is I will visit these areas again and um, not go by 2.5 numbers, but each number and then I will just meet you back in a second when I have graphed this out. So I will manipulate and see you back with the graph in a second. So I'm just uh, magnified around the assumed gate positions. So we had an indication around 70.5 and another one around 50.2. And yeah, graphing that is a bit of a mess, uh, or at least for me. Um, so here I just went from 15 to 19, and I noticed that um, at 15 it was still at 6.3, then it was at 6.4 for 16 to 18, and at 19 it was back at 6.3. And here it looks rather similar. At 15 it was at 15.6, um, then went to 0.5 for number 16 and 17, and then it went back to 13.6. Um, yeah, what did I say before? Yeah, sorry, I mixed up 15 and 13. So basically the contact points are um, 13.6.5.5.6.6 for 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So there could be a gate around 70, 17 here and yeah, 16.5. So basically 17 also here. So that would be an idea of a gate. And down here I did it a bit different, uh, the graphing. I just made a table with the numbers. I wanted to scan, so I went from 47 to 58. And I noticed that the um, left contact point goes from 6.4 to 6.5, back to 6.4. And basically the, um, the higher indication starts at 50 to 56. So the center of this gate, which is quite wide, would be at 53. Mm. Here, um, for the right contact point, it goes from 13.5 to 13.4, back to 13.5, and the gate is quite narrow, so that would look a bit promising from 52 to 54, so the center would be at 53. We have um, a contact point of 13.4, so there might be a gate also at 53 because also here the center position is there so basically also the contact area is smaller on this one 
So this is a stronger indication. So let's do a wheel test on 53. I will explain you what this is in just a second. So I just finished my uh, high-low test to identify which wheel is indicating. And basically what you do is you write down your assumed center, which is 53L. Then you add 10 and subtract 10 for your high and low test number. And for the low tests, yeah, you basically always set um, two wheels to the assumed gate center. And then you'll subtract 10 for one wheel, which is kicked off. Yeah? And you do that for wheel 1, wheel 2 and wheel 3. <coughs> and basically, then again you find the contact points and you calculate the contact area, which is just the difference between the two. And what I found is for the low test is that wheel 2 is a minimum. That means basically if if you offset that from the assumed center, um, it, it gives you still a very small contact area. So it's either wheel one or wheel three at that point. And the highest increase for the low test I got was um, at wheel one. So um, when I put a different number to wheel one, I got a very large contact area in comparison to the others. Um, at the high test number, the result was not so conclusive. I redid some measurements here. Um, basically, you do the very same. So you test 53L on all the three wheels. And here again, wheel two was indicating a minimum. So I knew it was either wheel one or wheel three. In yeah, wheel two, it's definitely not. So, um, yeah, I tested again then um, wheel one and wheel three here. And yeah, this is unfortunately not conclusive, though here the contact area is in both cases roughly the same. So from 6.4 to 13.6. That's also here, sorry for the mess. But, yeah, so still I would assume that 53L at wheel 1 is our gate. And yeah, let's continue graphing with, I guess, wheel 3. And I will keep wheel 1 at 53L. And yeah, then we will see what happens. So here we are again. Um, this is still the, the graph I showed the other day. Uh, yeah, it's another day for me today. So um, I graphed this out and then I did the, the wheel test, high-low test, and it was a bit inconclusive, but still at the time I figured um, that wheel 1 should be at gate 53 left. Mm, but this was, yeah, not completely conclusive because, yeah, same values here and, yeah, wasn't sure about it. Um, also, still the, the gate structure, yeah, this is far too wide to be a real gate. And so I rethought really about this area, um, which also indicated a gate. And here the gate structure matches much better. This is like indicating for three numbers and here for two or three. And I, yeah, I just dialed it again and the numbers check out. They are correct. And so I wanted to check if, if the high-low test gives anything here. And this is what I did. So I dialed for 17L in the center, uh, 17 left in the center, and then added 10 and subtracted 10. And basically um, for each of the tests, it showed that um, wheel 1 should be at 17 left so i'm stuck now between the two but i think yeah 
taking all together, I mean here it is completely conclusive. This is 7.4 compared to 7.1, 7.2. 7.3, 7.0, 7.1. So each time it shows that it's best um, or that this is not good if you don't have 17 on wheel one. If you don't have 17 on wheel one, you get a high contact area. That means, yeah, wheel one should be 17 instead of the 53 I also assumed before. So I think I'm going to change my mind and actually try, what was it, 17 left at wheel 1. Maybe we keep this in, in as a question mark. If it doesn't work out dialing with this, then we might come back to that. <laughs> Is this a normal process? I don't know. First time <laughs> doing a real, real graph. So. Hope that works out. So I will go now and graph wheel 3, I guess, because that's easy to dial. And then we'll see. See you back in a moment. So here we are back after graphing out the second graph where I, yeah, I decided to put wheel 2 at 53 right. Just I had to put it somewhere. Because because I didn't want to dial both two and three. At the same time, I just wanted to dial wheel three. So I just put this at a low spot I found in, in graph one, which was around 53, yeah. So I was hoping this would indicate maybe better. I don't know, but still indications were a bit rough. But I found something here around at 32.5 so I decided to magnify this area and I scanned from 29 to 36 and I got results like 6.5, 6.5, 6.7, 6.7, 6.7, 6.6, 6.5, so a very tiny indication for an increase in the con left contact point and also on the right contact point, I found a very sh tiny in, um, decrease. So yeah, the contact area at 32.5 seems to be minimal. And the good thing is um, I just scanned one wheel. So I don't need to do a high-low test because I know which wheel is indicating the one that I scanned. And that is wheel 3. So I would suppose wheel 3 is around, yeah. 32.5 so 33 so now we can assume that wheel 1 is at 17 left and wheel 3 is at 33 left so all we need to do is find wheel 2 we can exclude already that it is not at 53 because otherwise we would have gotten open <laughs> but that's all i can assume from now so in order to find the last wheel, or the middle wheel, I have no better solution than uh, brute force it and just set wheel 1 to 17 left and then dial in wheel 2 from starting from 0 to 100 in steps of 2.5. Uh, yeah, and if you're wondering what the forbidden zone is, um, Usually you don't set a combination with wheel 3 between 0 and 20 because then yeah, it can happen that you don't have to dial the third number because the gate will already drop when you set wheel 2. So yeah, I told my wife don't set a third wheel in this area, which you typically shouldn't. It can also make problems in operation the lock. But yeah, so let's brute force it and maybe I record it so you can follow the process. So see you in a moment. So here we are back at the dial and yeah, I thought about it and I still want to graph this last try because 
yeah, you never can be certain about your choices, right? Because now I assume wheel 1 should be at 17 left and 3 should be at 33L uh, left. And I scan the second wheel to the right. So either we get an open or at least we get a good graph and we have an idea about a gate position on wheel 2. Hopefully, but let's hope for the first option that it opens and that we don't need to create a graph three, uh, 4. So what I will do is I will scan the second wheel to the right, which means, yeah, I had to think about it, but I will, will be going this direction. So from high numbers to low numbers. Yeah, ah, you can see that. So we would start at 100 and then go towards zero. And yeah, let's see how the graphing turns out. And yeah, I can leave wheel one parked at position 17 all the time if I'm dialing carefully. But if I screw, ever screw up, I can always reset. So let's see. Maybe I do the first dialings in real time and then speed up the whole process. The whole idea is that you you capture the open. <laughs> uh, maybe so. One hundred. One hundred. One hundred. Park the wheel there, and now we go to thirty-three. And. 33 again and we check the contact area which I just did it's 6.2 ish and yeah maybe 14.1 so quite far off it seems. So now I should be able to just dial to the right, pick up one wheel at 33 and pick up the other wheel here, go to 90.75, 90.70.5 then change direction, pick up the wheel, go to 33 left and check the contact area. Now we'll change the pen actually to a more nice one. Oh, it's the same, so 6.2 and Fourteen point one. So fast forward from here until we get the open, hopefully. Do you see that? The contact area is so small. 
That must be an open. What was it? 65. Let's have a look. These bolts should retract if I turn it to the right. Yes! Uh. Okay, amazing. So, we got the open. Oh boy. So, yeah, how do you draw it? Let's do it like this. So it opened on 65 to the right. So the combination should be uh, 17, 65, 17, 65, 33. Actually, when I, my wife set the combination, I asked her to write down the combination in an envelope. And let's see. So it was 18, 65, 33. Uh, yeah, she said it a while ago. <laughs> Last year already. This this long has this, uh, has sleeping for this has been sleeping for this long. Oh, great. Let's dial it, close it up and dial it in once more to see if it works. So we set everything. And yeah. Let's see. So I think it's reset now, so 17 left then I found 65 we need to dial this twice three times actually 65 and now 33 once and twice and back to the contact area Yes. Great. Yeah. And I don't need to do another graph. That's so cool. So let's put the safe away and wrap it up, wrap it up for a second. So maybe let's do a quick wrap up from what I've learned during this manipulation. And yeah, first of all, clean graphs. I mean, this is my first graph and this was a mess. I don't know why I used crosses to mark everything, but they are quite a mess. Later on I used dots, which was already much better. But yeah, especially in, in the magnified areas, this is all a mess. And I don't know, for me, these tables works. I don't know how people still note uh, Full numbers in these graphs. I mean, these are designed to have five numbers in, in just yeah in here, and it is just a mess if if you do all the dots in here. But I think people do that, and they're quite more talented than me. Maybe for me, a digital solution would be better in the future. So if I would do it again, maybe I put a laptop next to me and then just type down from what I've measured here. Then um, another thing is that I learned is, yeah, don't rush it. Um, these manipulations can can take you quite some time. Um, you have to dial in very carefully, and also, yeah, I did this over several days because yeah, I just don't have so much time on one evening, and one graph takes me quite a while to have it completely. If especially if you have to magnify two areas. Mm. So don't rush it and in that case I was happy that I just did the high low wheel test in, in this area on the same day I took the graph and then I stepped back and then I thought well if it's not so con conclusive 
as we found out here because yeah we had not the best indication um, so I thought yeah let's also do a, a high low test in, in this area here on the 17 and this was a bit more conclusive so at that point um, I was happy that I decided to go with that number because it turned out to be the correct one in, in this wheel and I was amazed that you have to look for so minimal changes in the end I would have not expected them to be that low and I would have not caught them without the veneer scale so this is absolutely a game changer if you're starting out manipulating and people don't use that anymore if they are more used to it but for me it was really helpful mm. yeah and also yeah this is high low test um, if you're manipulating more wheels than than just one the high low test really needs to be conclusive and that saved me in the end you um, go back to this number instead of this but I think I'm repeating myself now so super happy I got it open and yeah maybe I will let my wife set another combination <laughs> we will see but I think for me it's enough safe manipulation for now <laughs> okay if you're still watching Thanks for tuning in and hope to see you in the next video. Bye.